Welcome to Inspire Me with Jay, a podcast focusing on meditation, the near-death experience, and all things spiritual. I really want to make a difference in people's lives. I want to give value back. I want to see lives transformed. That's always been my goal, whether it's with my writing, this podcast, or the online courses that I teach. I want to make a difference. So I've de- what I've decided to do is every first and third Friday of the month, I'm going to be offering three of my most popular ebooks absolutely free. You can go to Amazon on those Fridays and get them absolutely free. Also, on October 28th of this month, 2022, you can get these three copies free as well. You can receive Walk as Children of the Light, Heaven's Truth, or Meditation for Everyone on the first and Friday of every month on Amazon for free. See the link below for these books. And after you read them, you can help share in this blessing as well. Pass it on to your friends. Tell your friends about these three books, write a review. Writing a review can actually help because it not only helps me, but it helps Amazon to put the book out there to more people. Hello, this is Jay Spills with Inspire Me with Jay. I have a special guest today. Why don't you introduce yourself? What is your name and what do you do? Yeah, thanks for having me. My name is RN McCarty. Uh, It's pronounced kind of like a nurse, like an RN. And uh, I am a spiritual life coach and a speaker and an author. So what do you do as a spiritual life coach? Um, I help women to kind of rediscover themselves. I think a lot of times we put our dreams on hold and there comes a time in our lives where we're just, it's so the the desire is so strong inside of us that we're like okay i need to do this and so helping them find what it is that they love would love to be doing and then really the courage to pursue it and actually manifest what it is that they they want and i use spiritual principles to to help them do that and you work exclusively with women then um i do not i i do not discourage men but it seems that that's that that is how it's worked out that the men are my clients <laughs> yeah. so what kind of spiritual principles do you use to work to help women with well yeah so basically different ideals of um of the law of attraction the law of of vibration um the law of circulation. So these ideas that the universe is is of creative stuff that we are in, we're created in the image and the likeness of our creator, which is creative. And so um, this, this creative energy, whatever you want to call it, um, God, source, spirit, um, the force, (laughs) um, that spiritual, this creative energy uh, you know, even in science, you go back, you go down to the smallest amount and we're basically, it's proven that everything is made up of energy, whether that's, you know, in form or whether it's in, in energy form. So um, I, I work with this, with this energy in, in creating the, the experience that I want to have, that I believe that we are supported in, in whatever desires we have. So if I am wanting, I can use, uh, I had a weight issue. I can use that as an example. So um, during COVID, I had gained a lot of weight and um, I did what everybody else was doing in that, oh, I got to lose this. I got to do something about this. And I'd have this kind of, you know, attempt to, to change that and I would maybe eat less or not have that dessert that I wanted or maybe go for a walk here and there. And I didn't have any results. And then I kind of really 
came to a point, I had made a decision, which is a big part of what I teach, making a decision for something. And once that decision is made, that then the universe start, starts to bring you things to support that decision that makes it what, you know, it brings you what it thinks you want. So I made this decision and then um, I, with that decision, I changed my behaviors. I signed up with an app to kind of help keep track of things. And um, and it, it was going well, it was going easy. And then I started looking on online, like other groups that, that were my age, women and um, other people about losing weight. And, you know, the app has, has uh, connections and things. And in that, I, it started getting darker in my mind that, that uh, I started thinking, oh, this is so hard because that's what was going on in the dialogue, how difficult it was to lose weight, especially with women my age, like I'm in my 50s. And so, oh, it's so much hard. It's so hard. And this happens and that happens. And, um, and I started to plateau. Like I wasn't losing weight for weeks. I wasn't losing weight. And then I kind of came to the realization, like, this is what I do. Like I help people to visualize what they want. And so I started putting that into play and I thought, okay, what is it that I want? It's not, I don't really just want to lose weight. I want to be vibrantly healthy. I want to have a spring in my step. I want to feel more alive. Um, and so with that image that's ahead of me, this is where I'm going. Uh, and I could hold that in my mind and really begin to feel the feelings of that person. What does a vibrant person feel like? So when I was walking, you know, I just had a lift in my step. Like uh, it, it was easy for me to, to kind of see myself as this vibrant, alive, healthy person. And, um, and then from then on, the weight just came off and I lost a 30, a 31 pounds. And it's been, you know, over a year that that stayed off. And I think that the power of visualization, having an image that you can live into where you can really feel the feelings, that's the, the uh, law of vibration, where you start to vibrate at the same level as what it is that you want, and then you can create that in your life. The, um, David Hawkins, are you familiar with his work? Uh, the name sounds familiar. So he did this research on the actual physical vibration and emotion. So when we're in a, in a depressed state, we, we literally vibrate at a lower frequency. And so um, the, the vibration of gratitude and the vibration of abundance are at the same level. So when we want to begin to create something, uh, that that brings us life, that brings us energy, that brings us joy. We can put on that feeling, imagining that we're in that situation, or even imagining something that that brings that feeling that we can that we already have in our lives. It's a person that we love, or a a pet, or a child, or a, a a going to the beach experience. Whatever brings you joy, you can you can imagine you're in that situation, and then bring yourself to that vibration by vibrational level. And the thing that happens with that is that um, like attracts like. And so you then begin to bring into your experience opportunities and people that fit the need that you're wanting. I spent several years of my life stressed, anxious, and depressed. I needed to find something that would make my life work. For me, that was meditation. With meditation, I found the peace of mind that I was looking for. I found the happiness. And I found a way to improve every area of my life. My emotional life, my spiritual life, my relationships. I was able to discover things about myself. I can give you the tools to meditate. I will walk you through the process and hold your hand. Whether you're a beginner to meditation who's never meditated, or whether you're someone who's tried meditation and it just never seemed to work, we can make it work. Meditation is something that everyone can do, and I can show you how.
check out my course on meditation. So that get into that gets into like the law of vibration and the law of visualization. You mentioned like attraction and circulation too. So they all kind of interplay. What is the law of attraction and circulation involve? Yeah, so those kind of work together. And in the work that I do with clients, we do a lot of, of uh, in, internal work to kind of deal with blocks that we might have emotionally to, to receiving. Um, you know, that's worthiness issues, that's uh, forgiveness work is really important. Gratitude is one that's really in the main, you know, commonly known in the main culture these days. Um, and all of those help us shift us to be willing to receive. So the law of circulation is when I want something more in my life. If I'm wanting more love, if I'm wanting more money, uh, if I'm wanting better health, that I give out that energy. So with the health, that's a little uh, harder to understand a little bit. But with my weight loss, you know, the visualization and getting into that frequency of being this vibrant person that will circulate and then I become that more. So if I want more love in my life, I, I am more loving and that comes back to me. If I want more money or more time, I, I share the gifts that I have. And then I'm I'm more willing to receive, which is the psychological aspect of it. But I'm also, I as the spiritual person, I believe that that the universe starts to bring that back to us. Mm -hmm. So in terms of what if you know you want something, but you have no idea how to get it? Can you just yes. sort of send your energy out and it'll sort of bring in what you need to achieve it? The people, the ideas, whatever. Yeah, I definitely, I think if you have a clear vision of what it is that you want and the feelings that you want when you get that. I think a lot of times um, people have a, an idea of, oh, I want this thing, uh, the, the classic middle-aged sports car is one of those kind of things like, oh, I want this, this thing. Um, but really what you're wanting are the feelings that you think you're going to have when you get that thing. They, the feelings of, with the car example, um, of power, of, of um, wealth or being seen as that as that, um, the feeling of uh, virileness or um, sexiness of, of this, this that would be attractive to people, that kind of, you're looking for a feeling, not, um, not just uh, the thing itself. So um, as we can get in touch with, we have a vision, we get in touch with the feelings that we want, that we think this vision is going to bring us, we make that decision for that, like, this is what I want, mm -hmm. um, that then, and we hold it in that vibration, that, that emotional level, that then the universe does bring us, it brings us steps. So I don't know how I'm going to get there. And that's actually what I encourage clients to have is a dream that they, they have to have uh, the universal support. They don't know how they're going to get from here to there. And that's, that I believe is really, um, the spiritual practice. You have to have faith that the universe is going to bring you what it is that you want. Um, and so with that, that then, um, you know, it brings you opportunities, but you have to take advantage of those opportunities. I don't believe that you can just sit in your room and meditate and visualize and not take action. So action is a really big part of manifesting what you want. And I think that, that the action you know, changes you. It's kind of it has this alchem alchemical kind of experience that if I've taken these action steps towards whatever it is that I'm wanting, I am changing myself to become the person that has that thing. So the the process is just as important as the final result because it it alters who I am. I can't take someone else's fame. I heard Oprah say once um, how you know people want someone else's life but that life is for them and your life is for you so 
doing the work, doing, if you look, use it Oprah as an example, doing the work that she did, you know, she became that person that we all know. And so the process of, of visualizing, having this, staying in that vibration, but also doing the steps that we can see that come to us. And I think fear is a big blocker of that. That's the biggest thing I think that clients have um, is getting over the, the fear of, of failure or the fear that it's not going to happen. Um, and so I work a lot with embracing how do we shift that and the deserving is a big part of that. Um, but once you start taking those steps, the thing that's amazing is that it, it it releases a great deal of energy. When we have something that we want to do but have put off, um, especially if there's fear behind it, once we take that step, there's this, wow, I did that and, it, and it's done and, and it wasn't so bad. And, and then you have the energy to take the next step and then the next step and then you find yourself you know, creating this vision that you want for your life. Mm -hmm. Is it sort of like the faith of a mustard seed? Yeah, I think that's a great example that, um, that, that faith ha is a big part of, of that step of taking that, that leap, um, the gap between where I am now and where I want to be. And having just the faith of a mustard seed. I mean, I don't know if you know botany, I have a, a degree in botany, but the mustard seed is really, really tiny. And, you know, if you have just a little faith and you stretch that little faith, then it builds because you, you find yourself successful. Oh, that happened. I could do that. Or I survived that. And, you know, maybe the fear is a fear of failure, but once you take a step out and and you have a failure, you're like, oh, well, that wasn't that big a deal. I'm still alive. I'm still, you know, life is fine. Um, but then you can stretch a little bigger and then stretch a little bigger. And then um, that faith grows. And I think that it really is um, uh, one of my favorite authors uh, has this, um, I'm trying to remember the expression. Um, it's uh, Ernest Holmes, who, who founded the... Uh, the Church of Religious Science. Um, he wrote the book Science of Mind, and he has this term that he calls um, expectation. What is it? Uh, oh darn! Um, I'll get there some at some point, but I I don't have any notes on it right this year, right here with me. Um, but this this idea of this sort of passionate expectation that you 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 have such expectation that God will provide to you, and that's that faith of mustard seed thing, um, that, you know, when you hold this, this level of um, passionate, I'm going to use the word passionate, but that's not the word, passionate expectation, that um, you just, you are at that vibrational level, that you know, it's sort of like when you know there's a, a gift coming in the mail, mm -hmm. and you can just kind of hold this like oh it's coming it's coming this um anticipation um i wish i could remember the word um but the idea that this this wonderful gift is coming and having that that expectation that of course this is going to be so when we you know have this vision and we do this we're doing this work that we can hold that vision with with faith that it is going to happen and when we shift into that kind of faith, the, the things that happen so fast after that, because we're, we have this sort of uh, back and forth communication, a pull from the vision, but also our own desire to, to reach towards it. So it's kind of coming from both ways. The universe is bringing us stuff and we are stepping into that potential. Mm-hmm. How do you deal with lingering doubt? Because sometimes you always have in the back of your mind that I'm going to take all these actions and it's not going to result in anything. Because that's always kind of a, Absolutely, a lingering yeah. doubt that's there. Yeah, I think it's a it's a very common um, issue that most people have. Um, I think of myself as a pretty good manifester and I too still have moments of like, is this really going to work out? Like, and I can convince myself, oh, yeah, that's not going to, you know. But the, the key is to kind of catch yourself in it. 
to, to notice when you get into that space and to say, no, this is, I have faith in, in the universe that created everything, you know, the power and presence that created the entire universe is manifesting through you into a physical form. It's created you to, to do this work that only you can do. So my business name is soul print journeys mm -hmm. and a soul print is what takes um, your uniqueness, that your experience, your talents, your interests, there has never been a constellation that is you. Like you are the only one in all of existence and you will be the only one. So taking that, that, you know, makeup of you at this moment right now, all the things, you know, including the third grade teacher that said, wow, you're such a good poet that now you love poetry or, or the, the bully that you had in, in fifth grade that, you know, said you were ugly or whatever, all, all those things make you who you are now. So how do we use all of that and, and your talents, the things that you are innately good at, but also the things that you've developed, the skills or the, the interests, you know, I love nature and I love history. And um, so what, what is it that makes, makes up you and using that in a way that um, brings forth the greatness, the, if we're, you know, talking Bible, Jesus says, you know, um, you don't light a lamp and put it under a bushel. So we are here, as Jesus said, to let uh, our lights shine so bright that people see us and go, wow, what, you know, God is working in that person. And then, then you can, you know, share this, how, how you do it. Um, they, they're curious about who you are and what you're doing because you're letting that light shine. And it becomes easier if we focus, keep, keep in that faith. So we get those feelings of doubt and we catch ourselves and we say, oh, that is, that's incorrect. You know, that's not, um, that's not something that's going to happen. So one of my um, colleagues, I was making decisions for people about inviting them to um, uh, an event I was having. And I was like, oh, I don't know that they're going to want to come. And she said, don't, don't make decisions for other people. You don't have no idea if they want to come or not. And it's that kind of thing that we doubt. We make this thing of like, oh, no one's going to want to do this or, oh, this isn't going to work out. Um, but what is that voice? That is that voice of fear in you that's talking. It's not the voice of God that's speaking to you. So getting re in, in touch with the vision that you really want, what it is that you want, and, and the power at your center that's coming through you, that divine um, spark, that whisper of that still small voice that is speaking to you individually, that you, this is what you are here to do at this moment. Mm -hmm. Do you have to sort of be pure of heart when you send out these intentions? Like, you know, if you're saying, well, I want to help other people. I want to help my family. I want to make a difference in the world, but part of it is kind of selfish. Is that a problem? I think um, I think God wants us to all be uh, abundant in every aspect. So if if that desire is taking someone else's, you know, coveting, if I'm looking for somebody else's stuff, then yes, that's not a good that's not a good dream. If but I believe that I can have as great as anyone else. If I I can admire some, I can admire Oprah, and if I want you know, the, the success of Oprah, and I'm so passionate about that, I can manifest that, but it would be my own unique version of that. So um, it, it's fine to, to, to shine. It's fine to have abundance in your life and have the money to, to spend in a way that you want to spend it. I don't believe that that's selfish. If it means that I'm taking from someone else and, and wanting someone else's good, then that that's where I would say is there's some stuff there that, that it won't work is the thing because your your vibration it jealousy or or coveting um, that that's a really low frequency and you're not going to be the manifesting um, 
level of creative energy with with the divine if you're if you're vibrating in that greed sort of space mm -hmm. it was part of um moving forward with with this reaching out to help others achieve their dreams too that you sort of have to give back in order to receive yourself yeah i think that um i think god wants everyone to, to win and so I do think that it is really important to to have, a, you know, an aspect of is is what your dream is. I mean, that's actually one of the checkpoints that I ask the clients when they come up with a dream is, you know, is there good in this for others? Is this something that uh, will benefit more than just yourself? And um, and I think that that's, you know, that's a, a an innate desire in humanity. I think that we all want to make the world a better place and that those people who are um, experiencing that that sense of greed and selfishness and and wanting to hurt people, that that's really just fear and hurt in themselves that they haven't worked through. Um, and so, you know, I, I really don't believe that there is an evil force that is separate from God. I believe that God is everything. And that the fear and the the evil things that happen in the world are are based in in a separation, a belief of separation from God, and and fear and hurt. Mm -hmm. When someone comes in for uh, spiritual coaching, what what or life coaching? How do you what do you start them out doing? I start them a, first off is getting a vision. Having something that they um, that they really want in a in a deep level, so we can all have things that we want, but at at sort of a you know oh that would be nice. Like I have uh, friends who who say oh if I, when I when I win the lottery, you know that would be super nice. But to get something that has a real energy behind it, and and it's amazing as a coach, I love this because when they find it and they're describing it to you, their whole demeanor changes and they just light up. It's, it's, uh, it's so amazing to watch because they're like, oh yeah, I'd like to have this and that. And then they start talking about whatever it is and they get, and then, then we could do this and then this could happen and their whole, their whole demeanor changes and it's so exciting. So finding that vision and it can be really challenging because I think that we've done, a, we've spent our lives thinking about what can I do that will make me money? What can I do with the talents that I have? You know, and, and we live in a very small sort of, uh, we constrict ourselves and, and God is not constrictive. So um, having this expansive vision that we have to depend on a higher power to, to achieve, that, that um, uh, that's really the first thing that I do when I start working with clients is having some creating a vision and really getting it in a way that they're excited about because it is work we do have to take the steps so it has to be something that you're so passionate about that you're willing to do the things that you don't really want to do um, in order to get there mm -hmm. so do you do you use things like vision boards because I know vision boards are kind of popular now to help create your yeah vision. I uh, yeah I don't I don't usually use vision boards I mean I have done vision board work and it's been really great I remember in my twenties doing a vision board for uh, a roommate and it turned out that the picture that I chose in the magazine looked just like the roommate that I ended up with which was kind of wild um, so I do think that they really do help, can help you really focus on on what it is but for me. Um, and I, it's funny because I'm a very visual person. So it's interesting that you ask that because I, I don't usually do do that. Um, one of the things that I like about just building our own imaginative vision in our minds is that I can change things. So I guess I did do some vision work um, recently. We bought a house, um, this house la uh, last March, and we had been looking since October for a house and... Um, I have been doing a lot of 
a vision work around what is it, what it is that I want in a house. You know, one of the things that I really that were really important and what it felt like to be in the house where my office was, um, what it felt like to be working on the screen and have have woods out in the windows on two sides and. Um, and so I did, I did take, collect some photos online and made a little file of them. So I guess that would be a vision board. So yeah, kind of coming up with some things that make you feel that way. Um, uh, so I think that can be helpful, but basically what I do with clients is really just having them describing it, um, verbally and then all written, written down, um, they're writing it and, and. I find that the more people speak their vision, the clearer they they become in it. Things it, change a little bit. And, is a big part of what you do? Do you use like meditation or anything? I do meditation with clients as well. Um, I always start off with what what we call a prayer treatment, which is kind of just acknowledging that God is everything and that we are made up of that everything. Um, and that God is kind of behind us and this vision that we're creating, that, that we have that support and that we can hold that that dream in, in open hands, um, knowing that uh, we don't have a, a, the overall perspective that God has, but we have our own little, this is what I would like and maybe something better would even be. Um, sometimes, a lot of times with disappointment, when something doesn't work out, it's actually... Um, because something better happens. Like again, back to the house, um, I we had found a piece of property that we really wanted. We thought this was great. It was it was something that would work. It it had the acreage we wanted. It had some trees. It had a creek, and um, and the house was fine. And we we had been looking for so long that we were like, okay, this is you know we'll have to settle for this. This is fine. Um, we put an offer on it. We actually had, uh, we were selling two houses and a friend of ours was going to loan us a temporary, you know, till those closed, a cash offer. So we could make a cash offer. We offered 135000 over the asking price for this property and we didn't get it. And I, I was like, I felt like I was tempting God when we kept going up and up and up. And I'm like, I'm going to get this, you know, like <laughs> this is my property. And um, the bidding war was just uh, not an experience I really wanted to repeat. And um, when we didn't get it, we got a chance to kind of think about, is this really what we would love? Which is what I always ask my clients, you know, would you love this? Because you need that passion behind it. And uh, we decided, no, we wouldn't love it. Um, it was kind of, it was doable. Um, so the next week, Having, having turned it down, because we actually were given the offer after a while, and we turned it down, we found that this house, which is uh, far beyond any dream we could possibly imagine, the a master woodworker made it as a love letter to his parents. It is, it, it, everything is immaculately made. It's all wood. We're, you know, it's like a big lodge, and we live on 13 acres of old growth forest. Um, I'm a nature person, and so this is beyond anything I could possibly have imagined for myself. And so, you know, hold that dream with open hands because God might bring you something even greater. And um, and then in that same prayer, we, we look at gratitude, feeling a sense of gratitude for, for um, that support, that love, um, the, the chance to have a life at all, the fact that we get to breathe and here we are existing in this experience. Um, and then a sense of peace that 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 knowing can bring us. So I, do, I we begin every session with something like that, um, and uh, and then we use I use meditations most of the time with clients. They're actually pre-recorded meditations that they can use during the week to kind of get them centered into into the work that they're doing. So how long do you usually work with someone? Do you have like an hour session and it goes for several weeks or something? Yeah. So most of what I do is um, is have a, a sort of a class situation where I have a client that's going through a program. And so they're different lengths. Uh, I really like working with uh, clients for a full year because I feel like 
they're, you know, as a dream is beginning, there's so much action that happens in the first three months that it's super exciting. And then we can kind of burn out or we can, the fears come up and we, like I did with the weight loss, we plateau and nothing happens. So to, to have a full year, we can really, um, I can really get them fully on their way in this, in this vision, really experiencing life in that and settling into it where it's not a foreign, um, freaking out of your comfort zone kind of thing. Um, yeah. So we, I, I like working for a year, but my, my shortest program is, is 12 weeks. So three months. Mm -hmm. But how did you get started in, um, spiritual life coaching? Well, so I was ordained as a minister in 1993 and um, had a church for many years. I was a, the senior pastor for uh, a church and then I had children and I really, I found all of my sermons being about be, have, being the mother of a very small child and I had no very small children in my church. And um, and so I was like, maybe I need to retire. Um so I went into being a mom for uh, many years and then my children went off to college and I um, kind of re-looked at what it was that I wanted to be doing. I went into teaching. I taught actually um, grade school and then grade school PE for many years while my children were growing up. And then um, I kind of reconnected actually with my mentor um, originally, who was the person who ordained me originally. And she is running a coaching uh, training. And so I went, oh, that sounds good. And um, it was just a really good fit. It brought a lot of, of what I love to do. Um, and, and it kept me in a place that I could do virtually with a schedule that I, I could choose my own thing. I wasn't tied to one congregation every Sunday. Um, and so it was it gave me a lot of much broader uh a group of people that I could draw from and and help with help their lives. So I work with people all over the world, um, which is kind of fun. And um, I wouldn't be able to do that if I were at a at a one church place. Mm -hmm. So is a lot of your work done um, virtually through Zoom and online, different things like that. Yeah, I would say most of it. I had my first live retreat here at at my lodge house which is what one of the things that i think uh was the reason that we ended up here was because now i have you know over a mile of trails in this old growth and i have this wonderful meeting space where we can gather and um it just became this fabulous retreat center so i have now begun my live work though um i live on a mountain and so um october was sort of the end of when I could do live things because of the snow. Like I don't, it's very unpredictable when when the weather will be good enough for people to come out here. So um, starting in the spring, I'll have more live, a lot more live um, things. Again, we just moved here in March. So um, I, we haven't even been here a year yet, but um, most of my work, uh, especially with COVID has, has all been online. So I do Zoom classes mm -hmm. and coaching. So was I've heard you say gratitude several times. Is gratitude one of the keys to really moving ahead? Yeah, I think so. Because um, so there's a part in your brain called the reticular activating system. And what that does is it, um, it looks for what it thinks you want. So it's why you can hear your name in a crowd of people when someone calls your name. Um, it's when you hear about a book or a, a song and that's been out a while, but you never heard of it. And then you hear it everywhere. Um, so it, it filters out all the things that you're not interested in and gives you, brings you exactly what you, what it thinks you want. So when you are focused on negative things, when you're focused on how things will not work out or, you know, how somebody did this to me and now I'm stuck with this and, um, blaming something for other people, um, that's what the world will bring you. But instead, if you focus on gratitude, what happens is that your brain starts to work during the day to find things to be grateful for and stuff comes in and you're like, oh, I'm, that's really, I can, I could be grateful about that. So as we practice gratitude on a daily basis, whether you begin or end the day or, you know, throughout the day, 
find times with gratitude, that what that does is it shifts us to begin to experience. So more things come into our lives um, that uh, we can be grateful for, but it, it's this sort of cycle that, com that comes from that. What are some other qualities that are important in moving forward? So um, I think we talked about faith. That's a big, really big one is to really um, begin to, to feel that connection with our source. I think a lot of times we're, uh, you know, in our society that we, we have this idea of God, but we're not really um, choosing to connect with that energy, that source. Um, I believe that... Um, that God speaks to, to every individual, you know, the same that, but that we have to be listening. So to, to be, develop a practice where you begin to voices that are um, not, not fearful and constrictive, but instead opening and inspiring that those um, of potential. So I think that that's a big thing in developing that, not just that relationship. One of the questions that's often asked is how do I know this is the voice of God and not my fear talking? And um, some ways to tell are, are, is it expansive? You know, is, does it, does it bring you uh, excitement in life force? Does it make you, um, you know, feel more vibrant and alive or does it bring you, fill you with fear and doubt? And, you know, is there um, any kind of, uh, deceitfulness or selfishness in that desire. So those are an easy way to do it. But another thing that's really important is, you know, as you develop your relationship with that voice, you can recognize it. So the example of, of a dear friend, you know, if a dear friend calls you on the phone and starts talking to you, you, you know exactly who it is. There's no doubt that that who that person is on the phone. So it's kind of beginning to trust that maybe with a mustard seed idea too, where we begin to, to practice, you know, the, the listening and taking action on that. And then we begin the, to, to begin this faith, uh, building that faith so that we can take larger steps and have bigger dreams. But um, that, that, that's another big part is to have that relationship and to, to develop that. Um, noticing what we're noticing is another aspect. And that is the, the whole thing I was talking about when we get into, into doubt, when we get into those sort of that negative space of, oh, this couldn't work. That's not going to end the fear that we notice and we catch ourselves and we make the choice to shift. Sometimes it's super easy. And I, I get there too, where I'm like, just kind of wallowing in it. Like, I just want to, like, I want to experience this downer kind of thing like oh that's not going to work and no one's going to show up and I you know that's not going to sell or like, getting into those that that space can be you know there's some kind of uh, appeal to it it's sort of like um, the rubber necking when you pass an accident or watching tv shows that are really dark that there's some kind of you know we have this kind of curiosity about it so when we catch ourselves, you know, while we're trying to really create a, a big dream for ourselves, you know, the, the, the point of what we're doing here as a human being, um, when we catch ourselves in that space to shift quickly and to develop that practice that, that um, you know, as soon as you see it shift and then um, the timing that you catch yourself will be quicker and quicker too. You won't be in it longer, you know, you'll be in it less time before you catch yourself as you develop that practice. Mm -hmm. When you're working by yourself um, to try to improve yourself, is there like set times you take during the day, whether it's 15 or 20 minutes to focus on your dreams and, and achieving them and things like that? Or it's just throughout the day, you're kind of like trying to bring your mind in focus on it. I think, um, both. <laughs> I think the doing the, the before you take your put your feet on the floor in the morning to feel a sense of gratitude to to put on that vision of like where you're headed and to feel the enthusiasm as if you've already achieved it. Um, I believe that it's 
it's in the spiritual world. It's already created in the spiritual world and it's our job to create it in the physical by doing our work. So to, to get in touch with that dream and feel the excitement about it before we put our feet on the floor. And then um, at before we go to bed, so, or as we go to bed, before we go to sleep, that um, a lot of uh, cultures believe that that's actually the beginning of the day, that the, the sleep cycle is kind of part of the creative process. So if you're holding that vision of what it is that you really want and the feeling and that connection with our source, that, um, that your whole dream cycle is, is put into this creative, like, hmm, how can I solve this problem? What, how is this gonna, how can I resolve this? Whereas if we, you know, watch a horror movie before we go to sleep, <laughs> that's our last thought, we're gonna create, you know, we're gonna be dreaming different things. So the dream time can be used in such a powerful way to, to answer questions. I, I definitely recommend, you know, if you have a puzzling, what's the solution to this to ask before you go to sleep, your higher power. And then I always find for me that in the next morning, um, it's not necessarily words. It's not like, okay, this is it, but it's sort of often a feeling or a, um, a just kind of an aha, like, oh, I could do that. Um, and then really like, again, throughout the day, if you, if you find yourself catching yourself in that negative space. So when I was wanting this house, um, I, imagined I we were we hadn't been accepted it was like four days before we put our offer in and we hadn't heard um so as I'm holding this you know all those doubts kept coming up like oh someone's going to come in and get it you know they're going to bid higher and we're not going to get it and because I wanted this house so bad um I would imagine myself walking down these stairs that where I'm living now but I was living in another house and I was walking down totally different stairs that looked very different. Um, but I was imagining myself walking down those stairs. So doing, stepping into your vision while you're in your daily life, it can be really helpful in, in keeping it and shifting. Like, who am I in, in this house that's different than I am in a different house? Or who am I in a different job? So say I'm doing the job that I have, but I have this image of the job that I want. Who is that person? How am I interacting with my colleagues and, and clients? How is that? And to put that on during the day in my daily life can be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Is there sometimes when you start moving forward, is there a problem with like imposter syndrome? We start seeing yourself doing positive things, but you're like, this isn't really me. And what if they discover that it's not me? I think that um, everybody has some um, level of imposter syndrome when you begin something new. Um, your comfort zone is wanting to keep you in a place where it's all familiar, and you know that you 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 know all the steps of what your what your life is, right? That's you know why it's comfortable. Um, I think using visualization to to create the results that you want, what that does is it expands your comfort zone because when you get in that situation you're not you you know how to be it um you've done it you've been there you're you felt it and it it can really shift those those imposter syndrome doubts because you're familiar with it you you you've experienced it um and so it's not a foreign experience um So what would be like a final word you would leave with people if they're wanting to improve their life and use spiritual principles? I think the one thing is to, to realize that God has your back and that the, the inner desires you have for something are, are little God seeds. They're implanted by the divine for you individually to, to bring about in the world. And to know that this power, the power that created the universe, this creative energy is wanting to work through you. So as you step into uh, you know, a greater idea of who you are and who you can be in the world, to really develop that 
connection and that awareness of your constant connection with that source. Where can people reach out to you if they want to get in contact with you? Yeah, my, uh, as I said before, my business name is Soul Print Journeys. And um, so my website is soulprintjourneys.com. I'm on Facebook at Soul Print Journeys. I'm on YouTube, Soul Print Journeys. So yeah, I think just doing a search for Soul Print Journeys um, is, can get you, can, uh, there's no other one out there. So you can find me. And I'll give links below, but yeah, thank you for being on today. It was a pleasure yeah, to have you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you, Jay.